Hey Josh, do you remember when movies were fun and entertaining and they had stuff like characters and character arcs? And plot! So I mean, we're pretty much just gonna cut to the chase because you probably heard so much about this movie. Uh, we're just gonna run by the plot really quick. Uh, Matt, why don't you lay this down for us? The plot is about a guy growing up, played by L.R. Coltrane. That's wow. about that it. was poetic and to the point, yep. which we like. So we're just gonna get into talking about what we thought about this movie and whether we think you guys should watch this. Well, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 98%, so they would definitely think that this is the masterpiece of the century. I mean, we've had people talking about it being the best movie of the year or the best movie they've ever seen. And, and my thoughts really about that are just what do you see in this movie that I'm missing? I mean, they're talking about Patricia Arquette winning an Oscar for this movie. I've seen 12th grade high school students act better than <laughs> Patricia Arquette in this movie. And the lead L.R. Coltrane, L.L. Coltrane is like they call him, uh, <laughs> he was pathetic, almost depressing to watch because of how just bland his acting was. He was a very bland character, very, you know, he, he wasn't really even a down-to-earth character. He didn't have any really emotional depth to him or emotional oomph. Patricia Arquette, like we said before, she, uh, they said she was the best part of the movie. A lot of people have been saying that she's the best part of the movie. And honestly, to me, uh, if that's the best part of the movie, well then the movie's pretty bad because Patricia Arquette doesn't even do her best acting in this. Her best acting comes from Holes, which is a movie I've seen a long time before this. And it's just... You and I talked about this. It's it's a premise that just a kid growing up, they filmed it for 12 years in the making, as it says on the poster. 12 years in the making, Richard Linklater, Boyhood, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people are saying this is the best movie. They say it's a visual treat. It's a visual masterpiece, and that it is honestly art incarnate. And to me, this isn't what movies are. Movies, it, movies are... You know, there are, right? Movies are a form Definitely. of art. But to me, Boyhood wasn't, it's that one painting that someone threw a bunch of colors on and called it art. Like it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. He just did it to do it. Now, that doesn't that doesn't mean that there's nothing I enjoyed about the movie. There was a couple parts. Ethan Hawke's character was pretty good. Ethan Hart, Hawke, to me, was the best character in the entire movie. And honestly, Lorelai Linklater, who's not even an actress, <laughs> was like, to me, the best actress in this movie. And she was actually, you know, had a little bit of depth and a little bit of emotion to her, but to me, the the whole the sum of his parts is a lot of style over substance, and it just fall it just fails at most of the things it sets out to do. Is it a work of art? Is it a good movie? Uh, no. I mean, I guess the best part of this is reliving the vintage soundtrack from the early 2000s. I mean, that's about it. And I mean. One of the biggest problems that Matt and I had with this movie is the introduction of characters and their instant disposal. We would have a new character who is more interesting than the lead, but then they would just toss him aside with no explanation, and I get it, it's supposed to be like life, but you're gonna have a movie, right? It can't be exactly like life. Life is kind of boring, that's why we go to movies, is to escape from life, really. And if you wanna watch a good art house, creative, stylistic film, watch There Will Be Blood. It's a thousand times better than this movie. The acting in it's great. And Boyhood, it really fails on every single level. I can't think of one category that I'm like, that really stood out, besides Ethan Hawke's character, who is actually really good. Now, it seems like Richard Linkletter, back in eighth grade, or back in film school, was like, I got the greatest idea ever. Let me just get out my camcorder, I'll film a little bit for 12 years, boom, Oscar bait. And it worked. And I don't know how everybody, everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid on this movie and I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's what you and me were talking about earlier and we said, you know, honestly, our opinions aren't, we're, our, we're way in the minority here. We're in the two percentile of people. We are the two percent. We are the two percent. And, and it's just, there, there are so many people who love this film and who get something out of this film, but to me, it just falls flat. Like, I, I said this about the earlier Oscar, like the, the one that won the Oscars last year, 12 Years a Slave. I just think it's a boring movie, and it's just one of those movies that honestly, 10, 20 years from now, you know, we're going to look back and people are going to say Edge of Tomorrow was a great movie. People are going to say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. These were great movies. Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. People are going to say, these are good movies. I want to watch those with my butt. But 10 years down the road, we're not gonna say Boyhood was a great movie. I think Boyhood's one of those one and done experiences in your life. Should you go see Boyhood? Should you see it? Should you rent it? 
no, it's not worth the price of admission. If you can find it free somewhere, I mean, if someone's like, <laughs> let me put it on Boyhood, you can be like, oh, I want to waste two hours and 45 minutes of my life. Let me go ahead and uh, let me w go ahead and waste that. Then, they, yeah, that's perfectly fine. That's your prerogative. It's what you do with your life. But yeah, we saw it on, you and I saw it on DVD mm -hmm. and we were like, hey, well, let's rent it. So we rented it and it, it was boring all the way through. Um, like I said, there are a couple redeeming qualities, but I, as a reviewer, cannot recommend you go see this movie. It, you ha there are plenty of plenty of other movies that came out this year that are a hundred times better. Go see Snowpiercer. Go see any of these underrated films and just skip it. Under the Skin would be a good one to watch too. Now, Matt, we're, we're critiquing this movie heavily. What would you, kind of putting you on the spot, what would you do to make this a better movie? I would focus. I would have focused more on the plot. That's just that's the main thing. Is because if if the if you're gonna film someone for 12 years, if you're gonna if you're going to do this type of movie, you need to focus on because it's a fake character. It's not a real character. If this was a real character, I'd understand it a little more. But since it's a fake character, you should have focused on the plot, focused on his arc, and not make it just about you know a boring kid. Give him a little bit of depth. Give his supporting cast a little bit of depth, and, and give give the actors a little more more meat on the bone to work with. Yeah, this is a very 2D movie. It doesn't lift off the screen. Um, the cinematography is all right. Nothing really sticks out to me. And I'm pretty much piggybacking off of what Matt said. I would say, if you're gonna have a two hour and 45 minute movie, you have to have something to keep us there. Like we can't just you can't just expect the viewers to be like, okay, uh, I'm fine with this you know, going from one scene to another with no transition, and it's just a bunch of little clips compiled and put together. So now I know a lot of you guys actually enjoyed this movie, and we want to know why. So go ahead and let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content.